Hello and welcome to another Timeless Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at my take on the Black Rat Burn deck, which is already very popular in the best of one format especially, and after taking a look at the numbers and the stats to see which cards in the archetype performed well and which cards underperformed, this is kind of my final conclusion and the deck I would recommend at least for now going forward. And one of the main revelations was that Ragavan actually underperformed in the archetype, and part of the reason of course is that Orcish Bowmasters is so popular, so one toughness creatures need to be very impactful to be worth running, and even though we do have four copies of the channeler, we can of course enable delirium pretty quickly, so it grows up to three toughness, so it can survive opposing bowmasters. So Ragavan did not make the cut, also the type of card that's much better on the play as opposed to the draw, and sometimes if you end up uh, drawing it in the late game, you would much rather just top deck a lethal burn spell instead. So Ragavan did not make the cut, and then I did end up going for a split between bump in the night and play with fire, and part of the reason is that I wanted more instants, so we would have a wider range of card types to enable Delirium on the channeler. So now we have 8 instants with Lightning Bolt and obvious inclusion, and then 2 copies of Play with Fire, which can also help us scry 1 in the late game if we're just looking for that final burn spell. And it can also be a removal spell of course, as opposed to Bump in the Night, which only goes face. And then being able to answer an early Deathrite Shaman, or maybe an opposing Ragavan if we're on the draw, can also be pretty important. And then my final 2 instants are Seer Blood, another card that you would typically see in the sideboard, but since the black-red mirror match is going to be pretty popular, I do like Searing Blood in the main deck as an answer for cheaper creatures that still deals 3 to the opponent's face. So there's usually enough targets for Searing Blood to be effective, but of course there might be some matchups where the opponent's more of a combo deck or a control deck, and then Searing Blood may not be at its best, but the numbers indicated that Searing Blood is still at least reasonable. Another card that I'm not running the full playset of is Eidolon of the Great Revel. Another reason, of course, is that if you're playing the mirror match and you're on the draw, then Eidolon may not be at its best, but it is still an important tool against Storm combo decks, as it will prevent the opponent from going off until they deal with Eidolon first. So I do like at least two copies there. And then Eidolon is both a creature and an enchantment, which goes a long way to enable the Delirium on Channeler. And then we actually have eight more enchantments in the form of Sagas, the Reckoner Raid, and Kumano. Kumano probably doesn't come as a surprise, as it's a great one-drop in any red aggro deck, but the Reckoner Raid is actually one of the main reasons to play a bit of black in this archetype, that and of course Orcish Bowmasters, and eventually supporting our companion, Lurus, which can also get stuff back from the graveyard, giving our deck more staying power against other mid-range strategies. And then Reckoner Raid is a great way to enable Spectacle, as we'll make the opponent lose one life and gain one life on Chapter 1, and once again on Chapter 2, so if we cast this and we're low mana, then on the following turn we'll get to untap, and then we can potentially cast one of our one mana spectacle cards, like Skewer the Critics, dealing three damage to any targets, and then a light up the stage. These are also more sorceries to complement Bump in the Night, so we also end up with eight sorceries in the deck, so we've got an even split between instant and sorcery, which once again is important for the channeler. And then Light of the Stage, also a card that at first I played four copies, since who doesn't like card advantage, but the numbers indicated that it's a bit of an underperformer, and I think the main reason is that decks might be playing too many copies, and in a format as fast and punishing as timeless, you don't always have a lot of time to dedicate spells to card advantage, so by only playing two copies we kind of limit the number of games where we chain light of the stage into another light of the stage, and just end up spinning our wheels instead of affecting the board state, but it's still nice to have, especially for trading resources back and forth, and that also kind of reinforces having a few more removal spells like play with fire and searing blood, as opposed to only burn spells that go face. Bump of the night can of course be flashed back, but that that doesn't happen very often since by then we can already cast Lurus and get stuff back from the graveyard, and our mana base also has some utility lands like Mount Doom, which will deal one to each player, and then a Den of the Bugbear, a creature land. I did not include any of the deserts, even though those can also be used to burn the opponent, just because they're pretty weak in the mirror match where we have to take damage off of them repeatedly. At least Mount Doom also provides a bit of mana fixing, so it does more than just burn the opponent in the late game. And then of course we've got four fetch lands, which can get either our basic mountain or swamp, as well as our four copies of blood crypt. And then one dragon skull summit, which will benefit from all the fetch lands, shock lands and basics, so it can enter untapped without costing us any life. And then black leaf cliffs, another painless dual land to play early. 
And then of course Swiftspear, another staple that definitely performs in the archetype, doesn't come as a surprise. Bobble, another great way to enable prowess for free, draw a few extra cards, and can also help with Delirium on Channeler as an artifact, so it's worth the drawback of potentially running into opposing Bowmasters. And then of course we can't discuss a black timeless deck without bringing up Orcish Bowmasters, remains one of the key cards in the format, great answer to opposing Bowmasters and to punish opposing card draw effects, and also helps us kind of play defense sometimes as we wait to draw more burn spells, can also go face to enable spectacle, so kind of does it all, and also very nice to get back with Lurus in the late game. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a promising hand. Could start with Channeler, and then immediately play Bobble to Surveil, and then hope it survives so we can keep going with Kumano. Kumano also sets up Skewer the Critics, naturally. If we're afraid of removal, then turn 1 Kumano could be a reasonable compromise, so we actually get the counter on chapter 2. I guess we're still gonna miss out on a 1 mana Skewer the Critics, so then I wouldn't be able to necessarily get double Surveil on Channeler. So all that being said, I think we just uh, end up casting Channeler. And then Bobble to Surveil. And another Channeler I could keep, and then next turn go... Channeler plus Kumano. Opponent's got a fetch line coming up. Trying to establish our threats early on, and then bank them up with our burn spells, pretty much. Opponent does have the lightning bolts. Now Swiss Spear plus Kumano is also an option. And then next turn, I'll get a channeler with a plus one counter on it. Don't hate that idea. Possible I should get Swamp to play around Blood Moon, but I just need double red here. So I'll get Mountain. And then if we can connect with Swiss Spear, that also enables Spectacle on Skewer the Critics, so we can maybe Channeler plus Skewer. And once we add Sorcery to the Graveyard, Channeler has the full Delirium. And there's a Ledger Shredder, and a Lightning Bolt could be a clean answer. Now Shredder could actually kind of be an advantage for us if we get a Bowmasters in play. For now it's still probably better to deal with it. And then I could Bolt, adding Instant, also grows Channeler. And then Channeler picks up a counter, so it actually has 4 toughness, so it doesn't die to an opposing Bolt. And then we still have some decent leftovers their own channeler, and a brainstorm. So they still need an extra card type for Delirium, but they might still have a 1 mana spell to cast here. Yeah, getting channeler to 4 toughness is a pretty big deal, although they could have the uh, Unholy Heat to still take it out if they get Delirium. For now we get to untap. And a Stifle on the Kumano, that's interesting. Well, now I should probably just Searing Blood the Channeler while they don't have Delirium. Don't need land. Stifle can be pretty effective against opposing fetch lands as well, as a one mana land destruction spell. But yeah, opponent's gonna fall to 3, so now Skewer's lethal. I guess keeping land could have been reasonable just to hard cast a 3 mana Skewer. But it's gonna be hard for the opponent to claw their way back. Wouldn't surprise me if our opponent was on Blood Moon as well, to kind of complement the Stifle. They don't have a companion either, so... Bobble could have been useful earlier in the game to enable Delirium. So opponent's kind of spinning their wheels a bit. 
Fetching down to two. He gets Island. But if they're sitting on counter spells, it's too late. And I think if we put Eidolon on the stack, it's basically game over. Now Reckoner Raid plus Cure the Critics would also do it. If they counter, they're still dead on board. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, we've got a keepable hand. Three lands might be a bit much, so we'll definitely surveil more into the graveyard. And then turn one. I think I do still play Channeler. And hope it doesn't get removed instantly. Small chance I want to play with Fire and Upkeep to scry. Alright, points on the dredge deck here. The self mill deck. No actual dredge cards in that timeless. So this one's gonna boil down to whether or not they hit Creeping Chill early to gain life back. For now, just Bloodgast and Stitcher Supplier. So yeah, I don't mind play with Fire and Upkeep. I could regret it if I draw like a Monastery Swiss Spear or another Channeler, but uh, I'll go for it. And then, yeah, another Channeler would have been a decent draw. Do I still keep it? It does get blocked by Menarcomiba, but it's still going to be a 3 3. I think I still put it in the graveyard just because we've kind of committed to this line of play. And then Bobble, I can keep on top, cast it for free. And trigger channeler. Lightning bolts could be worth keeping. We already have instant in the graveyard. Sure. And I'll play Blood Crypt so we can maybe bolt in our upkeep if we'd like. Cast Reckonerate, keep bolt on top. Alright, so. Can't quite attack with the three power channeler, but next turn we should be able to. And then I can cast two lightning bolts before taking draw step. Which will help out as well. Alright, opponent has a glimpse. Which did hit Narcomiba and Creeping Chill. So it's not looking great for us. Still gonna cast at least one bolt here. May as well go face. And then Swiss Spear. I'm not gonna be able to cast alongside another Lightning Bolt, so let's graveyard it. And then I guess we'll bolt again. And then Bobble, I could keep. In the hopes of uh, surveilling another card type. Alright, finally get rid of a land. So Channeler flies. Hit for three. And our opponent's most likely gonna chum block. They might just take it for a turn. Alright, opponent takes it, so that probably implies that their hand is pretty good. So, can sag Bobble. See what else is coming up. Prize Amalgam. At the very least I can go for Lurus next turn, but that's probably going to be too slow to make an impact. Bowmasters could clear Narcomiba and punish a potential Brainstorm. Supplier gonna mill whatever they put on top, which is another Narcomiba. And a play with fire the draw. So we can Bowmaster's Narcomiba. Then I'll have three blockers. Yeah, we might be able to survive. And then might boil down to whether or not to hit another Creeping Chill, or if we find another Burn Spell. Between the Surveil and the Scry, there's a good chance we do.
opponents got another glimpse, that's bad news. They did not hit Creeping Chill, so we got pretty lucky there. Seems like they don't have a land to get back Bloodgast, all out attack. So we don't want to block Stitcher Supplier. Opponent is going all out, so with a play with fire, if we can keep one of our creatures alive, that could help. So right now we're taking five, six, seven, down to one, and then we've got a lethal on the way back. So yeah, that could work. Just double checking here. Seven, block, block. Yep, that works. And don't even need to get lucky now. Swiss Spear would have been plus one damage. And a bump in the night can do the honors here. Eidolon would have been a little bit late to the party. Sweet. Very close one here against the self-mill deck and got lucky that they only found the one creeping chill. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. A little bit light on burn spells to enable prowess, perhaps. But we'll make it work. So turn one, Swiss Spear. Turn two, we can maybe Swiss Spear plus play with fire or play channeler. And if we're playing the mirror match, at least our mana base is painless. Reckon rate, so it is the burn mirror. Okay, so do I want to expose channel or two opposing bowmasters at one toughness? Not really. And a bump in the night seems fine. So we've got instant in the graveyard. Creature might join it soon. Bones got another Reckon Raid. And Wooded Foothills maybe going for Basic Mountain now. And Bolt the Swiss Spear, so now we've got Instant, Creature. If I play another Creature, cast Sorcery and we mill a land, that would be ideal. Artifact and Enchantment are also fair game. So I've got a pretty good chance of growing the channeler here. So let's try it. And yeah, enchantment counts. So now channeler's three toughness. And we still have some decent leftovers. Also chance I want a lightning bolt in upkeep. They've got their own bump in the night. And uh, they might be sitting on Orcish Bowmasters here. And do I want to keep a land on top with bolts to cast Bowmasters? Maybe. I think I just take my draw step. Alright, found a land anyway. So, yeah, let me just attack. And then if they block with Captain, we can just bolt face. Yeah, drawing all black leaf cliffs and basics is lucky. Or as our opponent had a bunch of shock lands and fetch lands. They're gonna fetch to cast something else here. Down to six. And a bowmaster, so they're not gonna be able to take out channeler, and then bolt plus channeler's lethal. So damage happens. And bowmasters, their bowmasters for what it's worth. But Bolt will do it. And I reckon a raid would have been fine. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, we've got a pretty awkward opener with our one tap land here. Dragon Skull Summit without a basic land type. So I don't think I can keep because of that. This one's not great since we're missing a second red source. 
but I can give it a shot. And then the question is whether we play Channeler into Reckoner Raid. I think I just need all the action spells I can get my hands on. Reckoner Raid sets up Skewer the Critics nicely, but I don't really need the extra black source in a way. Could also lead with Channeler. And then if it survives, we get an extra Surveil, which is nice. Okay, so let's Reckon Raid, and then next turn that sets up Skewer, so I'm happy to keep a mountain on top. Opponent playing with Yorion, so it's a slightly slower but high power deck. Can certainly expect some life gain from Oko, from uh, Omnath. So we need to get in while we can. Could cast an upkeep play with fire to scry and surveil. Bowmaster is a nice answer to the channeler. So now I think I just take my draw step, hoping to hit a land for double skewer. We did. And then once we get the opponent low enough, we can deploy Eidolon. And there's a Peacekeeper, probably naming Eidolon. Possible their hand's got uh, Leyline Binding and some 4 mana cards in it, and they don't care about Eidolon. Actually going for Lurus. Okay. So they definitely don't care about Eidolon. Could cast play with Fire and Upkeep, but I don't really want to keep a land on top, especially now that they named Lurus. So I'll just take my draw step, find the Lightning Bolts. Well... We've got five points of burn in hand. I guess I can play Eidolon, make them deal with it first. And then uh, can take it from there. Hopefully they take at least two damage off of it. Double block seems a little risky. And uh, Apparition still triggers Eidolon, so that works for me. Going for the Captain instead. So I can play with Fire and Upkeep, just to scry. Oh, I could still do that next turn. Find a Reckoner Raid. So if I Reckoner Raid now, next turn I can finish them off with my remaining burn spells. Yeah, that seems fine. Now it's very much possible our opponent's got an Omnath with a fetch land to gain some life back. But this might give them more of a sense of security, knowing we have a play with fire, which isn't lethal. And there's a fetch land. Yurion in hand. Alright, so we might be in the clear after all. Cast play with fire. If they counter it, then bolt resolves. And a Swiss Spear. Their opponent's at 2. So if I cast a Bolt now and our opponent counters, they die to my Eidolon, so I guess we'll just go for that. And that does it. Sweet. We get to rank up here as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a creatureless hand, which is not ideal since we kind of need that early damage output, but we've got a lot of burn, so it's maybe still worth a shot. Now we could play with Fire and Upkeep to scry and maybe find a 1 mana creature to benefit from the plus 1 counter. 
Opponent taking two for death right, which we're happy to take out. So, yeah, I'll just take my draw step. Find Channeler, ideal. So now Channeler gets a plus one counter. And we can play with fire death rights. And then I don't need another land. So we've got two card types in Graveyard, not counting on Channeler surviving here, but at least got rid of a land. We do actually get to untap. Bowmaster's a draw. Could maybe punish a Brainstorm if our opponent's playing that. Step one, probably attack. See if they have a response. Could double Lightning Bolt just to enable Surveil. And their own Bowmasters. Okay, so... Let that happen, see what they target. Channelers that are gonna try to block. I think we let that happen. And then I'm gonna go for the double bolt line, hoping we can surveil. I guess we need sorcery, enchantments, creature, artifacts, two of those. So it's not super likely. Could also let them block and then just Bowmasters the army token to basically save our channel or put in double blocks. So yeah, I could go for double bolt now. And then if we enable delirium, then a uh, channeler still survives. Seems worth the shots. Since now Bowmasters is less appealing. So yeah, we're not going to get there, we already know, unless I guess I could hit an Eidolon, which is both enchantment and creature, so there's still a tiny chance. Swiss Spear, so that's not going to do it. Question now is, do we want to draw Swiss Spear? Not really. Taking out my own etching didn't seem worth it to set up Delirium. So, as the dust settles, our opponent's at 8, still facing Etching of Kumano. And a Bump in the Night now enables Cure the Critics. So if I attack and they take it, we could kill them. Our opponent's also missing green mana to gain life with Death Rite. Opponent jumps, that's fine. So do we bump plus skewer now, or do we flash into Bowmasters? Not entirely sure what our opponent's game plan is here. Maybe just a mid-range deck. Yeah, I guess I'll go for Bowmasters so we can maybe attack with it. And if they have a Thought Seize, then they're probably taking too much damage anyway. If they're about to play an Uro, Bowmasters can also punish them. Oko instead. Can't immediately gain life, at least. Makes a food. That could be a great way to stabilize, but luckily we can end the game right in time. And now bump in the night, plus cure, don't even need to attack. Sweet. The rampage continues, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, always helpful, and it's potentially a mirror match. Our hand is promising. Eidolon also gets much better on the play than on the draw. So I think we're gonna go with Kumano and then turn two Swiss Spear plus Kumano. So we get the plus one counter. Don't expose Swiss Spear to a one mana removal spell. Turn one Swamp. And a supplier, so it's more likely to be the red-black combo deck. And yeah, supplier can certainly get in the way. Now if we wait until we get etching, then we can exile it so it doesn't trigger. Don't know if we have the patience for it, though. If I play Swiss Spear now, our opponent's most likely chomping right away. Yeah, close call. 
Eidolon does stop the storm combo from going off until they remove Eidolon at least. So I think I'm still in favor of Swiss Pier plus Kumano. And then next turn maybe Eidolon. My opponent took it, so they may need the supplier to sacrifice to a Diabolic Intent. Channeler is next. And a Thought Seize probably has to take Eidolon, which would otherwise prevent them from uh, storming off with Dark Ritual and Underworld Breach. But now Channeler is vulnerable to Bowmasters. And with Etching of Kumano, we would also exile their creature. Opponent jumps, Supplier also exiled. So they're not filling the graveyard. Their opponent's on the back foot here. They need a pretty explosive turn, probably involving Dark Ritual. Step 1, Stitcher Supplier. And a Ragavan. So they're playing defense. We can keep up the pressure. Swiss Spear plus Reckoner Raid. And smash. Point has got two blockers and still takes seven. And that'll do it. Yeah. If we get off to a nice start on the play, it's difficult for a lot of decks to keep up, including some of the best ones like the Black Red Breach deck. So yeah, all in all, this burn deck is one of the top contenders in the timeless format right now. And uh, it's for a good reason. We get to play with some of the most efficient burn spells ever printed on Arena. And uh, we've got some of the new timeless cards like Bobble enabling Prowess and Surveil on Dragon's Rage Channeler. We've got some of the most efficient creatures in the format as well. And then the late game plan of Lurus also doesn't hurt, even though we didn't even see it in action today just because the games were over so quickly. So yeah, much like Monorad and Standard, the Black Red Burn deck is going to be a menace and best of one timeless for some time to come. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.